I just don't know. I'm too embarrassed to ask him, Andra. Cass, it's not embarrassing, it's perfectly normal. And you're not alone now, remember? I came back to help you. Yes, so I'm to blame for you being involved too, aren't I? The whole thing is just silly and embarrassing. And it's all my fault. Oh God, what could be embarrassing her so much that she doesn't want to tell me? I almost don't want to know. Oh, come on. Tojin is your creator, Cass. You have to tell him. All right, what is it you have to tell him? Turgeon. Oh, um, I think I left a diagnostic running. Maybe I should go and check. Turgeon Cass has a boyfriend. She has what? Oh, Andrew, that's just not fair. How could you do this to me? Hang on, you mean she's not kidding? You actually do have a boyfriend? No, I bloody don't. Well, not really. I think he thinks he is, but he's not. Okay, so if he's not a boyfriend, what is he then exactly? Well, I guess it started when we got back from distant worlds. Remember all those journalists who kept calling to arrange interviews with you? The guy from Galnet kept on saying how nice my voice was. I thought he was just trying to sweet talk me to get more interview time with you. But then uh, he started calling just to speak to me. Just to you, eh? He wanted me to read something for him, some sort of news article. Said his bosses would get a kick out of it. Next thing I know, he's asking me to read more stuff, and then er, uh, well. And then er, uh, well what exactly, young lady? Giving me money for reading stuff. Whoa, 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 hold on. Was this guy paying you to talk dirty to him? No, nothing like that. This was all news article stuff. News article stuff? So... You're working for Galnet News? Well, sort of. I mean, it was just a bit of fun, right? Reading words and getting paid too. Where's the harm in that, eh? Hang on, hang on a minute, how was this guy even paying you? I mean, it's not like you have a bank account or anything. Actually, she kind of does. What? Well, it's just possible I may have popped into the Bank of Zayn's computer system and created an account for her, under the name of Cassie Satin. Uh, possibly. Cassie Sutton? Oh, great. So, now I'm guilty of bank fraud as well as coding illegal AIs. Just how long has this been going on, Cass? About two months. Two bloody months? So why are you telling me now? Well, you see the thing is, now he wants to make the job more permanent. So, he wants to meet me, in person. What? But that's crazy! You don't have an in-person to meet. Well, I know that. But he doesn't, does he? So I keep on turning him down, but he just keeps calling. Well, of course he bloody does. He's a journalist, isn't he? And the longer you keep stalling, the nosier he's going to get and the deeper he's going to dig until finally the penny will drop into a 2 plus 2 equals 4 Eureka in the bath moment when he realises you're quite literally not the person he thinks you are and that I've really been coding illegal AIs. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Oh, this has gone way past oh, dear, Cass. This is all the way into sodding buggery bollocks territory now. Just keep on stalling him for now and I'll sleep on it and try and think of something. Turgeon's right. I'm really not the person he thinks I am, or a person at all come to that. I've ruined everything. Haven't I? Oh Cass, it can't be as bad as all that. We'll find a way, we always do. Morning, Cass. Wait, what the hell was that? Cass, did you hear that? Of course I heard it, Turgeon. I do have ears. Oh, apparently I actually do. How curious. Why are you all echoey? Well, that's because I'm up here. Um, in the pilot's seat, actually. In the seat? What are you doing up there? Um, not a lot, apparently. I seem to be stuck. How can you be stuck? Look. We don't have time for this. Can you just pop off and scout round the ship for that noise? I reckon it could be that journalist of yours. He's probably sneaked on board to stalk you or something. No way, Turgeon. There's no one else on board. 
I'd know it if there was. Are you sure? Sounded a lot like someone stumbling around the dark to me. Well, stumbling is all you can do when you don't know how to walk. Eh? Hey, what are you babbling on about, Cass? Who can't walk? It was me. I can't walk. Well, of course you can't walk. You haven't got any legs. Ah, well, about that. Eh? Uh, hey, about what? Oh, the hell with this stalker silliness. I'm coming up there. Right, now what the hell is... Ah! Cass, is that you? I mean, you've got a body. How the hell have you got a body? <laughs> you? You made Cass a body? Actually, I have to take a slice of that blame too. Oh, great. You too, Andra? What the hell is going on here? Well... I used the hollow me to make a photo ID for Cass you see, to set up her Cassie Saturn bank account with, and it looks like the potatoes used Cass's hollow me as a template for this body. Can't argue with that little guy, it is a fine piece of work indeed. A very unorthodox solution to our non-corporeal Cass problem perhaps, but there's no denying, it is an elegant one. Elegant? Oh, I like that. There is one tiny problem though. I seem to be having trouble getting my elegant body to work properly. A little help here, maybe? Ah, uh, well, seeing as I'm the only other one here with limbs, I guess that task falls to me, really. Go on then, let's start by getting you out of that chair. Um, how exactly do I do that? Well, it's quite simple, you see. I take your hands like this, you lean forward. No, 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 wait a sec, not too far! Oh, oh dear, I seem to have fallen over. Luckily, I landed on something soft. Lucky for you, that is. Not so lucky for Turgeon, though. <laughs> oh dear. I suspect we have rather a long night ahead of us. That's it, Cass. One foot. Now the other. Now the person. Careful! <laughs> oh. Sorry, Turgeon. That looked like it hurt. <laughs> That's okay, Cass. Don't worry. That's why men have two of those. <clears throat> Try again. Now, turn. Excellent. That's close enough for journalism, I'd say. Hey, I think I'm finally getting the hang of this. Let me try something. Well, nearly Cass. Ow. Oh. Not bad, not bad. I have to say that trying to run on the ceiling is perhaps a tad ambitious for a first try. Let's keep it to the floor for now, shall we? Okay. Right, Cass, here we are. Now, don't worry. I'll be on comms the whole time listening, so if you get out of your depth, I'll chime in with some advice, okay? Okay. Welcome to Gathered Reception. Do you have an appointment? Uh, yes, uh, Cassie Satin to see Muck Raker. Uh, oh, it's Mick, I see, sorry. Uh, Cassie Satin to see Mick Raker. Cassie Satin. 1400 local. Your appointment is confirmed. Please follow the yellow markers to the reception room. Tea and biscuits will be provided. Tea and biscuits, eh? Nice. But I'm betting the potato didn't give you a digestive tract, so my first piece of advice is don't try and eat the biscuits, Gas. Okay. How do I look? You look very shiny, actually. Okay then, Cass. Good luck. Off you pop. Good luck, Cass. <laughs> okay, Cass. Testing, testing. You hear me? Reading you five by five. I'm at the guy's door now. Here I go. Hi. I'm Cassie. Cassie Satin. Whoa. And you are beautiful. Why? Just look at you. Wow. Hey, what are you staring at? Is there something wrong with me? Oh, hell no, Cassie. You are perfect. Oh, I see now. You are staring at these. They're not real, you know. Neither is the rest of me come to that. <laughs> Beautiful and funny too. You know, I feel like we already know each other so well, Cassie. What? 
What are you doing? You'd better move that hand right now or there's going to be trouble, buddy. Oh, come on, darling. You and me. We can make some beautiful space music together. Oh. Oh, dear. Well, Turgeon, you did say men have two of those, didn't you? Yikes. I'm sure he'll be regretting that. When he wakes up, that is. That's assuming he does wake up, of course. Oh, bollocks. Does this mean I'm fired? Well, on the plus side, he can't actually fire you if he's dead. But, even if he's still alive, I kinda doubt he'll be telling anyone how he got that bump on the head and why he's suddenly walking with a limp. Uh, typical sort of outcome for us, really. Come on, you lot. I think we'd best be getting out of here. Hang on a moturgeon. Do you think that the reception room had cameras in it? Cameras? Well, I suppose so. I mean, everywhere tends to these days, doesn't it? In that case, I have an idea. Be right back. Hello? Can I come back in now, please? Oh, sorry, Cass. Forgot you had a body for a moment there. Just a sec. Ta. Well, being a gal net girl was nice. While it lasted. Oh, don't give up the day job just yet, Cass. I now have some rather interesting video footage in my possession, you see. Andra, I'm shocked. You wouldn't be thinking of blackmailing that journalist now, would you? Oh, Turgeon. Blackmail is such a dirty word. But not as dirty as that journalist's mind. Exactly, Cass. So I'm going to use it to make him an offer he can't refuse. Good lord. There was me thinking this gig was all Mission Impossible or Turgeon's Angels. And it turns out I'm actually Don Starstone the Bot Father. Okay, ladies, let's go home. I'm um, what? Eh? No? Oh well, never mind. And now it's over to Galaxy Girl Cassie Satin, who's bringing us news of the Enigma Expedition out to Colonia. Humans have encountered many puzzles in the galaxy, some that exist within ourselves, some that call to us from the far black, and then there's the other kind of puzzle, the one that springs seemingly from nowhere, reaching out to touch humanity from the very darkness between the stars. The newly formed Enigma expedition aims to tackle the greatest of those dark puzzles, the Thargoids. Ever since the Thargoids attacked our stations in the Pleiades, our hospitals have been filling up with the victims of their alien weaponry, the casualties bearing unfamiliar caustic injuries that are challenging our finest medical minds. But if history has taught us one thing, it's that humanity never backs away from a challenge. Commander of Enigma 13 has risen to that challenge and is spearheading an expedition to Colonia to help humanity's newest colony prepare to face the Thargoid threat. His Enigma expedition draws on Commander's experience of Thargoid encounters, and plans to take medical and tactical data to a specialist facility in Colonia. The expedition's legacy will be a mega ship christened Dove Enigma, which will remain at Colonia, continuing its work as a memorial for humanity's determination in the face of adversity. Well? How did I sound? Perfect guess, perfect. Talking of perfect, I think that expedition might be the perfect opportunity for us to get away from Galad in the bubble for a while. Not that I think we're in any actual danger, but sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry. Journos like Mr. Muckraker there have a half-life of a thousand years, you know. 